Okay, let's see what we got here. It happens to be Saturday afternoon, September 21st. Wow. Ooh. September 21st, 2013. The end of fall. And tomorrow. The end of summer. And tomorrow, which is Sunday, September 22nd at, I believe, 4.40 oh, p.m. Oh, I Lord. think it's 4.40. It, it, it will be autumn. Officially. Oh, the Lord. Pumpkin season. The first day of autumn. Well, the frost is not quite here yet. Unless you live in upper New York State. You know, Sussex County, New Jersey, you're all the way up there. Monticello. Uh, what is it? Orange County, Dutchess Monticello County. Monticello is usually very cold. They got frost. Very cold. The higher, the higher elevations. Yeah. But not us. Not yet. Not yet. Because when I hear the word frost warning, well, you, way, you get your pumpkins. Way, no, way before I hear frost warning, my plants go in the basement. Uh, for for their winter hibernation, uh, so I don't have to buy them again next spring. Oh, Monsanto would not like. That. I'm a schmuck. I'm a schmuck. Monsanto I'm, would not like. I'm that. a schmuck cookie, and I can care less what any corporation Do not save or corporate your seed. CEO thinks, feels, or says. Do not save your heirloom seed. You have to. Buy them. I am year. not. I refuse. I refuse to be a sucker for any scam, for any racket. Trouble is, what happens when it becomes the tradition? You mean if they make natural, non-GMO heirloom seeds extinct yeah. because they're so damn evil and greedy and wicked? Yeah. That's yeah. a good question. Uh huh. That's why I see articles about save your heirloom seeds now. Mm -hmm. Oh, excuse me. I didn't realize we were on the air. Welcome to Progressive Discussions. This is Progressive Discussions coming to you from the uh, Newsletter Censored Research Center in Northeastern New Jersey. I am your um, host, James P. Madonna, and I will officially and formally pipe aboard my illustrious co-host and mentor and the very founder of Newsletter Censored in 1977. The backbone of our organization, NewsletterCensored.com. Let me pipe him aboard. And we are enjoying, I am not going to say it because I don't want to jinx myself, but we are enjoying all natural at the very beginning of this show. And so far, silencio? As long as it lasts. Yeah. Okay, here comes the piping. Oh, does this, this doesn't excite him. With my, it might. Maybe it's the piping that caused the initial racket from this creature that doesn't live far away. Creature from the black. Loop. My authentic bosun's whistle. A bosun's pipe. Arr, arr, welcome aboard, matey. Welcome aboard our progressive liberal starship, the one and only, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. How are you feeling this Is week? Is this the starship named Mutiny on the Bounty? Son of oh, a no, bitch. Oh, no, it's not a car. It's a car instead of a dog. Anyway, um, uh, it's getting humid. It's, we're, we're, we're experiencing what they call Indian summer. Hiya, hiya, uh, hi. I can't be Indian summer Hiya yet. doing, hiya doing. No, I mean, it's it's cold. Still summer. And then it's moderate, the temperature. And then it's hot. Like right now, it's not hot per se, temperature-wise, but the humidity is very high. Too. Anyway, I piped you aboard. Now let me begin with make my... Make it so. Yes, make it so. I don't know. Okay, here we go. I don't have a lot written down, but what I have written down is heavy duty. Now, mind you, a lot of I get a lot of really heavy duty, deep cutting information that you don't hear on the mainstream media. Huh. Either on stream, either on the either on lamestream, either As on Palin the would say. either on the major networks or on cable. Yeah. But we only have so much time to give it, so I have to get to the 
to the nitty gritty, I, I got to get to the, the, the topics that are the most important. Okay. Republicans. Huh? You know, or you want to call them conservatives, or you want to call them demons, devils. Just call them evil, please. Just call them evil. Schmucks, assholes. They're just evil. Pieces of garbage, whatever you want to call them. The party of, and I'm being a little uh, sarcastic here. The party of morals, patriotism, and family values oh. just voted to take food stamps away from soldiers and their families. Oh, yeah, we will be reading something on that. All right. Um, the United States has been at war for eh, 12 years now at a cost of four to six trillion dollars. Imagine Gee. what that could have done to Main Street. Okay. Interesting. Interesting where their priorities are. Uh, but their priority is to cut, to take food out of the mouths of poor children. Well, they, they don't, uh, that's a problem. They but, can always find money for war, but not for education yeah. and the poor. Yeah, and the homeless, and, uh, and yeah, education, like you said, and, and, and keeping the... Uh, putting money back in the pocket of the true consumer and backbone of America, the middle class. The consumer, 70% of the economy. And take the tax burden off the shoulders and backs of the middle class and put it where it rightfully belongs, as it was over 30 years ago, back on the rich. Thanks to Ronald Reagan, the middle class have the tax burden. That's what Mr. Jerry Brown is doing in the California, isn't it? Where's my shillelagh? I want to salute, uh, was it, uh, this is his third term in his, in his political career? I think so. I think Jerry was in for two terms. I believe so. The third term, the uh, illustrious comeback of uh, uh, now California Governor Democrat Jerry Brown, who I believe is a more of a liberal than a lot of Democrats. Oh, yeah, Mr. Moonbeam they used to call it. That's all right. I like moonbeams. That's beams. how liberal he was. Moonbeams are very uh, romantic and relaxing. But, you know, if you're part of the Adams family, you have to put that moon screen on so you don't get a moon burn. Remember how they used to sit out with the reflector? Morticia and Gomez Adams? All right, next. There are eh, 382 millionaires in Congress. Now, many became rich at our expense. Ugh. No. Not all, but a lot of them. But the average American's net value dropped 8%, but the net value of the average congressman increased 25%. Ain't that something? Ain't that a kick in the head, like Dean Martin said. Okay, 25%, the, the average a sh a working stiff mainstreamer, of course it went down, of course the average salary doesn't even come close to the cost of living. Been stagnant, hasn't gone anywhere, wages haven't gone anywhere. You know, and they always have plenty, more than enough money for, for war profiteering and for giving themselves automatic raises. Um, all right, it's interesting. Got two more here. Um, the average male workers in the United States made $283 less last year than they did 44 years ago. Yeah. That's That quote was made by Senator Bernie Sanders of Vermont. All right. Well, that's, that's what I said. Wages have gone nowhere. Also by Bernie Sanders of Vermont, the average the average female workers earned $1,775 less last year than they did in 2007. Because all the money's going upward by deliberate. It's rigged. Rigged. Siphoning up. Correct. Now, I'm done, but I just want to. You said two. That was the second one, uh, the, the two quotes by Bernie Sanders. Oh. So all of this is kind of tied in. Everything I, everything I said 
at the beginning of this show is is tied in. Um, there's more than enough money for uh, giving welfare to the rich, and there's more than enough money for war, war profiteering. You know, of course, you know subsidies, subsidies for corporations. Yeah, of yeah. course, welfare for the rich would be your Wall Street bailouts and subsidies, right? Uh, the hell with Main Street, which represents the middle class, the small businesses, the entrepreneurs, the mom and pop stores. That would be the middle class would be Main Street. So to hell with Main Street, to hell with the poor, to hell with the, the true consumer, the little guy. And welfare for the rich is fine. Uh, war profiteering at the expense of young, poor, and middle class American kids. That's fine to these wicked, evil, greedy, old, old bastards in Washington. They don't have enough money. So that's all fine. And mind you, they only work like two or three days out of the month. They don't, actually, they repeal two or three days out of the month. They don't work. Repealicans. Repealicans. Now, they they seem to, I guess they seem to feel that they they deserve making $175,000 plus per Can year without perks. Yeah. yeah, of course they do. And, we, and if they shut down the government, obviously they will not shut down their pay, but no. they may shut down the pay for Social Security and Medicaid and stuff like that. Yeah. But not their pay. Oh, hell no, hell no. Hell no. Now I want to do, before we uh, sink our teeth into our readings for this week, I want to do a little Barbara Buono campaigning. Um, Barbara Bono has been attacked by Chris Christie as uh, uh, tax and spend liberal. Being a tax and spend liberal, giving herself pay raises and raising is our it, taxes. Raising our taxes. Fifty-four times. Right now, if you ask Barbara Bono about raising taxes, she will most likely tell you. This is, we're talking about the New Jersey governor race, you know. Uh, Fat, obese, blowhard, obnoxious Republican Chris Christie is running for re-election. Barbara Bono is the uh, the Democratic uh, challenge challenger. If you ask Barbara Bono, in this corner. <laughs> if you ask Barbara Bono about taxes, I would say there's a 99% chance she would mention taxing the rich, raising the taxes on the rich, and not. The middle class and and and, and the well, we poor. don't know what taxes she raised, and it's not her. It probably was the legislature, etc., etc. So right. We don't know what taxes they are saying she raised. But well, we know what taxes Chris Christie raises. Yeah, that we know for sure. Anything that has to do with helping the poor, he eliminates, and I mean everything, any anything. And uh, he gives uh, multi-millions of dollars, if not more, to his rich buddies. Gives it, as in welfare for the rich. And his buddy contractors. And his buddy contractors. And, of course, wants to privatize everything, which doesn't really do the job. So as you know, they did in Pontiac, Michigan. Yeah. Historically, privatization always fails. Uh, and they got 20 people in Pontiac, Michigan now in the government because they privatized everything else. Is that so? Yeah. yeah. Wow. And that's what's going to happen to yeah. Detroit. And that's what's yeah. going to happen to many, many, many other cities across the nation. Yeah. Somebody showed a, a before and after photo and they said, this is, is this, is this Syria? <laughs> oh no! It's Detroit. Detroit, yeah. That's what's happening to uh, <laughs> these poor, uh, you know, these less fortunate American cities. Yeah. It look like a war zone, for God's sakes. Well, Chris Christie, like all Republicans, arranges so the rich do not pay any taxes. Uh, yes, that's right. They're, they have been on a tax vacation for the past 30 years. So, it's really simple and really in a nutshell. Chris Christie's record sucks. He might think he's the best thing since since night baseball, since uh, lights on a baseball field or whatever, sliced bread. But his record sucks. 
The only thing, the only entity he's ever <laughs> helped besides himself were the rich, like all Republicans, really. Uh, and uh, of course, Republicans are are making it obvious that they are racist and uh, and uh, misogynists and uh, homophobes and uh, you know they. Uh, they always seem to have a problem with immigrants of color, but never, never immigrants from Europe. Yeah, well, those, uh, you know, uh, they're white. Yeah, well. They're usually white. And they usually won't work for less than minimum wage in the United States, whereas the... Well, they don't like that. But they, that's when they like the immigrant of color, when they work yeah. dirt cheap. For the corporations. Right. Yes. Well, they pay. They love that. They're big on outsourcing, you know, get, getting more for less. Buying very low and selling very high. The, the capitalism, the capitalist system, and uh, you know everything about the Republicans is negative. Unless you're rich, then of course you love them. But we're not in that situation. So, um, but it, it is possible for a, a very wealthy person to realize that there is more to life than just amassing the most money. And they, they, they could, you could be... Well, that's not what the Bible says. You could, you could be philanthropical. You could be that's very not generous. not what the Bible says. About what, rich? Yeah. In other words... That's why it's so hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Be because yeah, he's focused on his moolah. So what you're saying is... And the, that becomes his God. The acquisition of wealth changes... And the, and the maintenance of it. Changes a person's mind. And possibly spirit. In other words, they change. Yeah. Then, then money becomes their god, and money becomes their main focus. There's that old saying that the young guy guy is liberal until he makes some money. Then he becomes conservative. Right. And you're an atheist until the plane is uh, uh, your airliner is crashing into the ocean, going downward. Then you become you quickly become very religious. Yeah, there are no atheists in the foxhole. There are no atheists in the foxhole. They find God. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so on and so on. You know, people, if you're... Everybody seems to have, whether, the, no matter who you are, everybody has an agenda. Ooh. Except the truth. The truth has no agenda. And it usually has no backers. No, that's why, that's why we don't. Anytime somebody presents the truth on on the internet, it does not go viral. Mm -hmm. You do not get millions of hits. Mm -hmm. Absolutely it, true. You don't. But if you're if you have something idiotic and you make farties, if you got a big lie like that kid had up there. That's a I was in heaven. And he described what was in heaven. Oh, that oh, was that I was that hits, was Mr. Baby. That was the Mr. Malarkey. His last Malar name was yeah, Malarkey. Yeah, full Malarkey. He was full of Malarkey. You know how many people yelled at us for exposing Malark, Mr. Malarkey, as being full of Malarkey, and certainly not being a Christian. Of course, we got tons of hits with that show. It's certainly not a Christian. No, because it was uh, his. Because Christians don't go to heaven. His description was uh, anti-biblical, perhaps. No, no man has gone to heaven except him who came down. Okay. Okay. It says it right there in the Bible. So where did he come up with this gall dang heaven stuff? And and did you know that he's in a better place? Did you know that in the Bill of Rights? The Constitution and the Bill of Rights, rather, the, the word God is not there. It's really not there. No. They don't. There is no mixture of, of, of church and state in that. So these these tea baggers, these these religious zealot, if you tell nuts, a lie often enough and loud enough, people begin to accept it. That's what that whole thing is all about. It's they want look. Nazi Germany it worked, style. It worked well. Bushy boy, and ever since Bushy boy, we now give money to faith-based initiatives in this country. And in the state of New Jersey. 
realizing that many, many taxpayers in America are not right-wing fundamentalists, evangelical, born-again nuts. And so you have to respect all people, all diverse people, because they all pay taxes, but they don't do that. They want to force their religious lies on your kids. Yeah, well, they want to make their laws, and supposedly they say their laws come from the Bible. I mean, Mr. Moore wanted the Ten Commandments up in his chambers or whatever, ever the hell, I think it was a judge, Judge Moore. He wanted the Ten Commandments up there. Was he a, uh, uh, an adherent of the Ten Commandments? Obviously, no. Not a hypocrite. He was an idolater. Right. Okay? And that's what they do. They're, they're all the laws against abortion are religious laws. They have nothing to do with politics. No. Or one idea against another idea. They're religious crap, just like prohibition. It's religion. Oh and they God. want it in the Alabama. Prohibition. You can the poor women of Alabama can't have in a vibrator. Can't have a, a sex shop. To or sell a sex shop. To sell them. Yeah. Now what the hell? Freedom! And South Carolina wants to make it illegal to be homeless. Yeah, they criminalize the, uh, the, the homeless. Get them out of the center of town! So they're like, um, it's like they treat the homeless like they were graffiti on a, on a building or trash on, a, on, a, on the ground. Like trash. Literally. Yes. Invisible. And that's not a Christian attitude, is it? Invisible when it comes to getting somebody to care about you but visible for the people who want to get rid of you. Yeah, but if you go down to South Carolina, yeah. you'll see the same kind of people who are doing that and making those laws and getting rid of them and everything. They'll call themselves Christians. Yeah, they'll, that's a Republican state. <laughs> yeah. Counterfeit, counterfeit Christians. Hypocrites all. Now, getting back to expense on the, on, uh, the, the extremely bloated uh, Pentagon budget, Mm -hmm. You realize how much money the, these new warplanes cost? How many millions each one cost? And 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 it's like and some of the planes that were built, Reverend Bill, were never, never used. used. Never used. Never and used. And then there's tanks that the Pentagon doesn't even want. You can help, but up. they can't. They can't stop the payments for them. They gotta keep buying them. And they're so and and and. Regardless of the astronomical expense of weapons, the only thing the Republican Congress can focus on is how much, how much they want to cut in food stamps. Well, gee whiz, it's eating up so much of the budget. You know? Now, when you take in all, right, the Pentagon budget is one third of our expenditures every year. One third. One third. You know, with all the safety net programs all together, mm -hmm. garbage compared to that. Garbage. You want to cut? I'll tell you where to start cutting if you're a real Christian. And it's the military budget, not the food stamp budget. Absolutely. Or did. SNAP, as they call it so today. Social services make up a very tiny percentage. Of, of the budget and uh, but not of the minds of the Republicans hey, the because rich. everybody on food stamps or welfare is a lazy bum. Let me tell you something if the rich paid the tax rate that they used to pay back in the old days they would not lower their standard of living they will still be living high on the hog so you're talking about relativity, a baby. You're talking about a bunch of very greedy, selfish, stingy people, and as far as the Republican Congress goes, and um, they got theirs and they want more. They got theirs. They don't care what you have. They don't care about you, and they want more of what they have. And these are these old fogies that, I mean, what do they do in their spare time besides uh, drinking martinis and? Uh, Play games on her iPhone. Play like, game. uh, McCain. Yeah. I mean, ah, what, what are they? What are they? Why do they? What 
Angry birds. For what reason, yeah, angry birds. <laughs> For what reason do they need to be richer than they already are? These old farts. It's incredible. Well, because they focused on that, that be, has become their god. I mean, I mean, like Dick Cheney and Bush. Well, let's let's take Cheney. He was so. Oh, you take Cheney. He was so hung up on on war profiteering, and the guy's got one foot on the banana peel and one foot halfway in the grave. And look, he keeps coming back like a zombie. What does he need all this money for? <laughs> you know, he's had eighteen hundred uh, heart attacks. And the guy keeps coming back. Now who's this who's this scumbag that says dead. who's the scumbag of all scumbags that says that we have no right to drinking water? Was that Rand Paul? Yes. Uh, along with the CEO of Nestle? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Rand Paul. The uh, the uh, 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 right wing uh, libertarian it's actually not right wing, he's libertarian. Well, uh, idiot. I always I always And Ayn Rand goofball. I always suspect had I always held libertarians in in suspect. This is suspicious. Of course. Of course. They're closet right wing conservatives. They're on the on the uh, fiscal issues. On the social issues they'll allow you to do anything you want. Yeah, but, but on the fiscal they, issues do they believe in in helping the poor? Libertarians? No, that's a fiscal issue. Fiscally, okay. Okay, they will not do that because for the last uh, 40 or so years the the propaganda has been that if you give more, more money to the rich they will provide the jobs and that will trickle down to everybody in the Tr society and we'll have a utopia! Trickle down. Okay? Trickle down. So if you give, uh, it's like that cartoon I saw, if you give the rich uh, um, more more of a banquet to, to feed on more the crumbs will be bigger as they as they fall down to the poor well the Bible says was, when you hold a feast yeah. you're supposed to invite the poor and the needy and the lame and if you have meat give that too and you're not supposed to charge usury money to the to the poor to the hungry poor if they need food, and you're well, not no, supposed, you're supposed to, to get bread to the and poor. you're not supposed to charge interest to the poor on loans. This is coming from the Bible, God's under, economics. Under God's economic standards, will never change. That means gold won't go up, silver won't go up, no, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Standards will never change. Therefore, no one will be able to make money on the backs of hard-working other people like the Wall Street does today. Yeah, all right, let us seek our teeth into these readings. All right, speaking of Balloon Boy. Okay, we have a good 30 minutes. Huh? It's not bad. Regarding Buono is more a Met than a Democrat. That's the baseball team, a Mets. She's, the Mets. A, she's a Mets fan? That's what it looks like. They're commenting on a previous letter. Okay. Can journalists like editorial page editor Alfred P. Dole stop fawning over this governor who really has not accomplished very much? Like I said. We continue to see very depressing economic news in New Jersey. And Governor Christie is clueless as to how to help those without a job. We see him going against the will of the people on issues like same-sex marriage and the medical marijuana program. Which, ki which ki destroys cancer cells. Which continues to be unable to supply patients or to make it easier for any future patients to participate. What is the appeal of this man? There's none. I bet he's not even in favor of stem cell research, which helps the the, the, the sick. Boy, and will. Will help the sick. And will help, you know, many more. Sure. Speaking of uh, food stamps, the SNAP program. Oh. Hi! That's my reading. Yeah, well, it got blown out. I know. It got blown away. 
I guess let's see, someone did not wish me to read it. Yes. The House has voted to cut nearly four billion dollars a year from food stamps. A five percent reduction to the nation's main feeding program used by more than one in seven Americans. The vote was 217 to 210 and it was a win for conservatives <sighs> after Democrats united in opposition and some GOP moderates said the cut was too high. She just shouldn't have been a cut at all. Just starve out the main, mainstream America because there are more poor, poor folk, poor folk being created than ever before. I wonder why. Isn't this the land of opportunity? Freedom. Yeah, if you got big bucks. Oh. So, in other words, to really be successful in this country, you have to have a stake. That's the American dream. Start out money. You gotta have that start out capital. Capital. Yeah. Now, what I remember what I read before about cutting food stamps from soldiers and their families. These poor well, souls. These yeah. poor souls uh, put their lives on the line, life and limb on the line for this country, and they come home. They come back from war, uh, either healthy or disabled, or the poor souls come back very disabled. They find out there's no jobs out there. That's right, Republicans. There's no jobs out there. And they end up living in a damn tent village in the woods. And this is the thanks they get for serving their so-called country, is to have food taken out of the mouths of their children and themselves. Well, as General Schmedley Butler pointed up years ago, they do not serve their country. They serve the corporations. I salute okay. the... He's dead, right? Yeah, he's I, dead. I salute the late, great General Schmedley Butler. Yeah. I also salute uh, Paul Terrace Walker Winsky because right now he is uh, in India, his very last stop of the uh, Indian Club um, uh -oh. World Tour uh, 2013. So, Wonderful. Yes, I, I saw some photos, very beautiful photos from him on his last stop. Anyway, continue about this. Fifteen Republicans voted against the measure, including two from New Jersey. Frank Obiondo of Atlantic and Chris Smith of Mercer counties. Hmm. The bill's savings would be achieved by allowing states to put broad new work requirements in place for many food stamp recipients oh, the, and to the, test applicants for drugs. Uh, they want to make sure you don't spend your welfare money on on, on drugs, what, drugs and alcohol? Yeah. yeah. Uh. But hey, there's a work requirement. What about... What did you just say before? No jobs? Why is there a work requirement? It's, I think it's an excuse just to take you off. That's correct. All, it? all the programs, everything. That's correct. Lock, stock, and barrel. But it's okay for the Republican Congress to to get all the fancy, expensive food and the pastries and whatever to, uh, uh, on on taxpayers' money. It's okay for them to take vacations on on the taxpayers' money, right? Yes. It's okay for them That's to right. uh, to eat nothing but the best. On the on the taxpayers uh, tab, and that includes Republican governors like Chris Christie. That's okay. When you look at these things objectively, and you see all the things that are being done, so that the poor have no choices, their choices become two: either die or rob, and then get sent to jail work for nothing. In, in a privatized prison. Right. And then you become slave labor. Correct. And all these things, just like this, work requirements and etc., it seems that they're all calculated 
to bring about this result that the corporations will have to pay nothing for people because they'll be so desperate. Is the economy doesn't get better, there's no job market, the person is jobless or the and or homeless, the person uh, ends up being a vagrant, they get arrested for vagrancy in a Republican state, they go to a privatized prison, they work for free slave labor. You see why I'm, why I'm going around in circles with my shillelagh? Yeah. It's all rigged, man. Yeah, that's what it looks Daddy, like. Daddy, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Dr. Bones McCoy. I guess you could see the whole his whole body now, right? I think, yeah. And, and uh, anyway, it's all rigged. It's 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 one it's one big revolving door. That's what they want to do. The ultimate end is you you end up as a uh, as an arrested vagrant in a privatized prison prison working for free. That's it. Slavery is back in groove. Which okay. is more profitable to the greedy bastards than outsourcing jobs to uh, to China and to Bangladesh. This see you see don't you wake up people man why do why do these stupid idiots these 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 inbred retards out there in the red states they continue to believe the lies, they continue to vote Republican, and they are actually cutting their noses off to spite their face. Exactly. The bill also would end government waivers that have allowed able-bodied adults without dependents to receive food stamps indefinitely. So, poor single individual people are going to be off the rolls, baby. They want them off the rolls. They don't want them on to be able to be on there indefinitely. Yeah. You see, a poor person without children, uh, they classify you as such. That's just an excuse not to give you any food stamps. Exactly. You know, but they say that you're able-bodied and you should be able to go out there. And uh, get they, 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 you're able-bodied, uh, 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 gainful employment. Uh, 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 yeah. Yeah. Where? Where? You you know there's a uh, this. I hear there's like a waiting list to to apply in some fast food restaurants. <laughs> you know, you're not the only applicant that walks into a fast food restaurant. Well, I believe that three quarters of the jobs that have been created are that kind of jobs and try to survive on that kind of a job can't I can't even a teenager can't you know what days. people the Democrats well they are the lesser of the two evils because we're talking about the two-party system which is corrupt but, but they are in the minority today in the house but has any Democrat well maybe not televised on, on the U.S. media, but has any Democrat really held Republican feet to the fire and told the American people exactly what their agenda really is? Bernie Sanders has tried to do that job. Yeah. Uh, what's his name? Um, Alan Grayson has tried to do that job. What about Mr. Big Shot, Al Franken? Has he tried to do it yet? Al Franken... Or he sold out sends emails. You don't hear anything Pussy. from him. When he was on uh, um, Air America, what's it called? Air America? Air America. When he was on Air America, he had a syndicated nationwide talk show. Correct. And he was writing books and he was spouting uh, his uh, uh, progressive liberalism, you know, along with others like Randy Rhodes. He sounded tough. As soon as he gets elected uh, a senator for the state of Minnesota, he dummies up. You don't hear about Al Franken anymore. Motherfucker, excuse my language. How these people sell out so easily. Continuing with the food stamp dilemma. Yeah, let us get rid of this article. No, I got rid of that one, oh, okay. but this is a oh, continuation. Continue. There are many reports about oh. how our economy is on the men. Oh, really? The unemployment rate is dropping. Oh, sure. Home values are increasing. Yeah. The stock market is rising. Yeah, what 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 dimension is this occurring in? But the picture doesn't seem as rosy 
for half a million New Jerseyans who are still unemployed. Poverty rate is uh, uh, rising in New Jersey. Almost 12 million Americans remain out of work. Minus 4 million of whom have been searching for work for more than half a year. Barbara Buono has to utilize all these facts against Chris Christie. Well, that's the nation there. That fact is the nation. It's not, national. Not New Jersey. National. But New Jersey is... New Jersey doesn't have, even have 12 million people, does it? <coughs> I don't know. No, I don't think so. Another 8 million are involuntarily working part-time. All told, some 22 million people are unemployed or underemployed. And of course, you know that figure is low. They're lowballing that figure. Yeah, it's good. yeah. Involuntarily means you're not working part time because you want to. Unfortunately, unemployment benefits are drying up for many of these jobless workers, leaving them to choose between paying their bills and putting food on the table. Uh, which me which means they will choose food and become homeless. That's where the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, or SNAP, oh, they, oh, formerly they, known as food stamps, come oh, in. Oh, okay, okay. I thought you were going to say uh, uh, Meals on Wheels and Food Pantries, which, which give ah. you garbage food. SNAP, the nation's most important anti-hunger program, has provided a vital lifeline for unemployed workers and their families during the recession and the recovery. Despite its very basic benefit levels, an average of $1.40 per person per meal, that won't even get you into the buffet here in Lodi, will it? $1.40 per meal? Actually, the best value in, in our area for buffets, and they're probably going to love me for plugging them, is, uh, no, I won't mention the name, because they're not giving me any commission. Uh, there's, there's a buffet on Route 17 South in Rutherford that uh, you can go there for lunch for $7.40. Yeah, well, is, here which we're is, only getting a dollar forty, Which is less than what fast food would probably cost you. Yeah, dollar forty is going to so get... So what the hell can we buy with $1.40? Uh, ah! We can go to McDonald's and have a kitty meal. Yeah, you can go to the, 99 cents. You can go to the, you can look up at the 99 cent do dollar value and you can get a little tiny hamburger and something else. Do we get a prize? And, a, and a little Is there a little toy? No, wait a minute. No, you can't get fries because No, you can get one hamburger or a, a small fries. I know at Wendy's for a buck you get one hamburger. That'll keep you alive. <laughs> in other words, you'll be ex maybe. existing, maybe. <laughs> and not nutritiously either. Ah. <laughs> if you want good. nutrition, oh, that's a luxury. In the guise in the eyes of the of the conservative government. Oh, yes. Oh, that's a luxury. The program has helped millions of unemployed individuals and their families get by during these tough times. Despite this continuing need, Republicans in the House of Representatives, including Scott Garrett, Republican of Wantage, New Jersey, are proposing to cut $40 billion over 10 years from the program. Yeah, why, why don't they take, take a cut in their, in their bloated salaries? <laughs> then they'll have to pay $1.40 for a meal. Uh, well, for people that hardly work at all, you know, I mean, it seems appropriate. Well, maybe then we could, we could have a work requirement for them, too. Yeah, well, we the people are supposed yeah. to own the United States of America. Yeah. You know, they're, they're public servants. Yeah. Mention that to any one of them, that they are servants, and they'll laugh your ass, their ass off at you. No, they'll say, no, we're, we're dictators. We are leaders. We're, yeah, leaders. That's that's how Republicans view themselves. Leaders? When they get elected. You elected me, and now I will do what I want to do. Well, that's because what, you elected me. Well, that's, that what, that's what Chris Christie says. You, you, uh, when he first got elected and people were screaming about him, and he says, hey, you're stuck with me for four years. You elected yeah, me. Exactly. Which means tough. 
tough uh, oh, titty. Tough titty oh, or what do you call it? That's the way the crab cake crumbles or tough toenails or whatever you want to call it. You stuck with me and that's it. That's it. That plan, which doubles the already harsh cuts the House considered and rejected earlier this year, would eliminate basic food assistance for four million to six million Americans. Now where are these people going to go when they're thrown off the rolls. Where they're going to get thrown, where they're going to sleep in a cardboard box. And steal bread. Yeah, because they have no choice. That's correct. And I thought America was all about choice. It's going to end up, uh... Freedom! It's going to end up uh, a choice to start a, 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 a civil war. Never going to happen. Pussies, because they're pussies. Pussies. 95% of people are adaptive supporters. Otherwise known as pussies. No, no rock, spine. No rock in the boat, people. No rock in the boat. Okay. You know how many? You know how many people on friggin' Facebook that 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 spend their time on political pages still think that their savior is going to be the Democratic Party. And, and and they have and and you know hey even Bernie Sanders is too kind when he speaks to the Republican Congress, you know I think he called them uh, loosely gentlemen one time. Yeah, well he. You Why know, is he so kind? There is this, there is this attitude of deference for your colleagues in the Congress. They don't respect him. Exactly. But Obama does it all the time, doesn't he? Being kind. Well, he was yelling the other day. No oh, big deal. Did he use any kind of words that actually describe the actions of these evil no. people? No. He did not really expose the Republicans and what they've been doing. I mean, really tell the American people wh what they actually are. Well, which in a nice way clear. they're demons. That, 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 it is very clear. Not cursing. I mean, they're demons. They yeah. tell you what they are, Mr. Norquist, and etc. <sighs> They but, want to destroy but, the United States government. But the American people... And now people they have a continuing resolution, and attached to that continuing resolution, and if we don't get the continuing revolution, uh, revolution, resolution, the country shuts down. It defaults on its bills, etc. So what did they attach to the continuing resolution? Defund Obamacare! Oh yeah, attack uh, a health care for, for the poor, uh, that people that can't afford health insurance. Yeah, yeah, attack the little guy. Oh, we don't have a right to, to, to health care when we get sick. Well, if you don't have a right to water, you don't certainly have a yeah. right to health care. So they, they, want, they want us to pay out of pocket for, for the basics of life. Well, it's all about money, isn't it? Oh yeah, in, in their world, yeah. yeah in, this country. in the devil's world, sure. Uh, including poor, jobless adults in areas of high employment, unemployment. Children, working, four families, seniors and veterans. A vote is slated for today. And by the way, speaking of your veterans that you were talking about before, yeah. what they want is them to die on the battlefield. They don't want them to come back because then they'll, and cause problems. Because then, then they'll cost the government money. Exactly. So they want to use little, they uh, want to use up the old weapons and the old bullets, so so the the uh, the corporations that make weapons can make more make money, more, yeah. right? And the politicians can get bigger commissions off that, and then they want the the troops to die on the battlefield because if they come back alive, they will cost the government money. Exactly. Exactly. See, we're telling it like it is. You don't hear this on, on mainstream media. Yes. Yeah. This proposal would deny food assistance to people who want to work but cannot find a job or a training program and in some cases their children. Proponents have mischaracterized these cuts as work requirements. The truth is that the provision simply would cut people from SNAP who can't find jobs. So in other words, if you can't find a job, you're out of the program. But there are no jobs. That's... <laughs> you hear that? Oh, I don't know.
don't know if it, I don't know if you could, the mic picks that up, but it's a siren. And it's appropriate right after the sentence, too. The problem is a lack of jobs, not a lack of willingness to work. While That's SNAP right. provides a critical support to the unemployed, it helps working families, too. The overwhelming majority of SNAP recipients who can work do work. Among SNAP households with at least one working age, non-disabled adult, more than half work while receiving SNAP. And more than 80% work in the year before or the year after. This devastating proposal comes on top of already enacted SNAP cuts. SNAP benefits already are slated for a cut in November. When temporary assistance enacted to respond to increased need during the recession expires, resulting in an across-the-board benefit cut for all SNAP recipients, the House Republicans' proposal would worsen food insecurity for jobless and working Americans, including many of their children, many of whom already struggle to have enough to eat at the end of each month. Well, mm -hmm. this just is an example of the Republican love for the fetus, but not for the uh, born mm -hmm. child. Remember when that fat jackass Newt Gingrich wanted to put poor children to work as school janitors to help to pay for food stamps? You know, it's only been, it's only been, um, I believe it was the early 19th century, or late, excuse me, 19th century, when we got rid of child labor. I think they want it Thanks back. Thanks to unions. I think they want it back. Hey, you owe a lot to unions. And progressives. You owe. Well, I'm saluting the unions, whichever ones are left. Yeah. All unions. Thanks to unions, you're you're you have what you you have whatever whatever positive things yeah, you used, have left. It used to be a 60-hour work week. Oh. You had children working no, no benefits, 12, 16 right? hours a day. No benefits. No benefits. And, and, and you know, the corporations and the, and the big boys and girls used to say then, well, yeah, a child should have the freedom to be able to work as long as he wants to. Does that sound familiar? He, he doesn't want to work. Does that sound familiar like in the Red State? Having the freedom? With the right to work along? He doesn't want to work. They, they rig it so they have to work all day and all night and fall on their face. They don't want to. Yeah, but they put the onus on the individual then. You know, they, they're well, using wants to. they're well. using freedom and patriotism. It's in other words, their evil is wrapped in a flag. Oh, oh. they're evil. Evil It's getting human, man. Yeah, their evil is wrapped in the flag. Snap grew over the past five years due to the prolonged recession and slow recovery. But enrollment has leveled off recently. The nonpartisan Congressional Budget Office projects that SNAP spending will fall as the recovery continues. In the meantime, it's one of the most effective ways to stimulate a struggling economy. Moody's Analytics estimates that in a weak economy, every dollar increase in SNAP benefits generates about one dollar and seventy percent in economic activity. And CBO rated an increase in SNAP benefits as one of the two most cost-effective ways to boost growth and jobs. See now these arguments, accurate as they are, in a sense, do not move Republicans because they're their, uh, 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 their, uh, what they don't like about these programs is an ideology. It has nothing to do with facts. You know what? Uh, I, I would really not be able to be very civil if I was a, a Democratic congressman or senator. I would be yelling at these Republicans 
fighting them tooth and nail, telling them what they really are. Yes, but the problem is they are in the majority. You do not fight with them. They can do whatever they want. And, and They've already voted 40 times to kill Obamacare. And this is why I do not respect any Democrat that wants to have lunch with them, uh, off work hours, or, or try to buddy up to them. How about playing golf? And play golf with them, and compromise, all this bipartisanship crap. As soon as the Democrat says that, I don't support that. Democrat. As a short-term method, you have to elect more Democrats. And play the numbers game. Play the numbers game. Despite SNAP's strong track record, some in Congress want to end food assistance to some of the nation's poorest households, even as the economy still struggles to create enough jobs for those who want to and are able to work. You know, wouldn't it be funny? Well, not funny. It would be a different way of looking at things. Why is it that the individual must go out to seek the job? Why is it not the corporation comes to the individual? Like, like the head say, please work for me. Like the headhunters that they send out looking for, yes, they send recruits supposedly. out looking for professionals to you take. You know what that is all about? What? Just uh, a, ma a matter of trying to weed out. It, it's like it's like voicemail. In other words, don't bother me here. I'll hire some. In other jerk words, to do in, my in other words, they send they send out a recruit to a company that already has an established a track record professional and they steal them from the company so they don't have to weed out a thousand and one applicants yeah. you know um, um, what do you think it's getting it's getting extremely humid right uh, well, all I can do is turn the fan up but let me finish here I'm like I'm Instead very uncomfortable of all right, Instead of ending food assistance for Americans still trying to find work or barely getting by with the jobs they have, Garrett's and his colleagues should give them a helping hand by focusing their energy on creating jobs that pay livable wages. That would do more than anything to reduce the need for SNAP in a more productive and less harmful way. Also, why wouldn't it be in a Christian nation? Why wouldn't it be that the people would want to give these poor people not just a helping hand, but a helping hand out Why do we not think like that? That's another one of these. Why do we not think like that? We don't think about, like I said, about the corporation. Why don't, why don't the corporation go out and seek the individual to help them work for them? Why is it the individual has to do that? Yeah, and... and, and, and it's just the way and, of thinking. And, and, and for people that can't afford uh, to go to school, can't afford the tuition, whatever happened to the old-fashioned apprenticeships, apprenticeship program, hands-on, training for people that can't afford to, to <laughs> drop 10 or 15,000 on a technical school or 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 the real rip-off tuition of a college well then those schools won't make money oh uh, they won't be able to uh, 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 they won't be able to have uh, um, bill collectors harass students for for, by, for paying their student loan off they don't have a job they don't have any money to pay the freaking student loan all I can say hmm. is these things will not be happening under God's economics of course not in the millennium of course not they will not be happening and shame on you American media for for not giving editorial rebuttals telling your viewers what's really happening and not uh, uh, giving face time to the progressive liberals that are out there 
and independence and ha interviewing somebody like a Gary No, a Jesse Ventura, a Ralph Nader, a Jerry Brown, and having them as guests on various shows and giving the American people an opportunity to hear both sides of the story. Why should we have to listen to the wrong side? Well, we're so our side is the right side. What are you talking about? I just said, why do we have to... You just said balance. That's what they do balance. now. Why do they call themselves fair and balanced if they're not fair and balanced? Why do we have to hear the wrong side? Yes, correct. Well, then why did you yell at me? No, I thought you were being... If uh, something is right... Sarcastic. That's I, thought, it. I thought you were playing devil's advocate. No, that's what we do now. They do that now. They, they put a Democrat on, they put a Republican on. You got both sides. No, you don't. But I don't hear, I don't hear many much of the Democrat side. They're always, they're always talking, the news media in, in, out of New York is always talking about what the, what the Republicans have to say in Congress and the Senate. I, I never hear, I never see them sticking a mic in front of any of the prominent Democrats and giving them the airtime. You know we're a country that goes with number one, we go with the majority. That's why they, they interview football coaches of winning, te winning, winning teams, teams. Not the losing. And not losing teams. So, That's it. So I as far as senators go, yeah, but even with senators, okay, the Republicans don't technically have the majority of the That's Senate. That's correct. But I don't see them uh, interviewing Democratic senators. Let's take Bernie Sanders. He's the only, he's one of the few independents there, right? He's on radio every Friday. Bernie Sanders? Correct. Bird lunch with Bernie Sanders. I'm talking the about Tom the Hartman friggin' show. major media on the boob on the boob tube. This is what I keep telling you. These about son of a bitches. These pussies about songs, etc. We do not have a way of delivering all that is available to the people who want to hear it. These corporate suck-ups on in the, U, the the major networks, man. They don't. All right. We have to take a break. I know we're going along fast and furious. It's time for the uh, Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman's gastronomic delight known as lunch. And we'll be back with William H. Morrow III. And hopefully he won't call too early. Well, now he may, because we could start a little late. That's, that's true. Uh, I'm here with William H. Morrow III. And uh, we were discussing <clears throat> the other day about beliefs and the origins of people's beliefs and why they believe in what they do. We were talking about things that became tradition like Dante's Inferno. Uh, so, where do we come from? Who is what? It's, like, it's along the lines of that wonderful TV show, Ancient Aliens, which makes much, so much wonderful sense. And it makes you question things, but they offer more proof than anyone. Mm -hmm. Like I asked you the other day when we were talking over coffee, Jim, and, uh, I said, I looked you right in the eyes and said, do you pray? And I said, if you do, about what? And if you don't, why not? And uh, it actually tells you. You don't know how to answer that. It's just common. I mean, it's obvious. But it's a question people usually don't bring up. But it does invoke and invite discussion. I would assume it also upsets a lot of people because they don't want their little world of religion upset. Don't question my religion. Why not? Hey, we're not criticizing you. We're asking questions, people. You know, uh, it's the chicken or the egg. Which came first? In a sense, in essence. Did God create man? Or did man create God? What is faith? Both. Belief. Might they be. are hope. <clears throat> they are not fact. I have faith. That means I hope. It doesn't mean it's fact. So there's nothing wrong with questioning where do we come from? Who so are we really? You know? And I'm sure some people out there will say, I'm awful for saying that. It's not my beliefs and you know what my beliefs are. I'm asking questions to people. Other things we discuss, remember, if you remember, with your prayer, your belief in religion, or lack of belief in religion, what do you expect?
contact. What do you want? What is life worth? What is a single life worth? Mm. We have selective beliefs as far as the news goes. You have certain little people, the whole world or the country latches on to when a young person is abducted or killed, sadly, uh, what have you. Yet for that, for every one, have tens of thousands of nobody ever hears about. Why do we have selective caring? And why should it come down to some little black child in the ghetto, if it's a wealthy white child, and gets all the press coverage? Why should it be that way? Is it right? My belief? No. Like you, I've said it many times on your show, I firmly believe in all people are created equal. A human being is a human being is a human being. It's that simple. Cut and dry. There's no argument there. A life is a life. So, that's why I asked you the other day, do you pray? And if you don't, why not? If you do, what about? And it does invoke thought. And some people, they get very scared about that question. I mean, yeah. not about it, with that question. Why well. should you be scared? Your faith is so strong. <clears throat> Why are you afraid yeah. of that question? Well, I I personally uh, prayed a few times uh, this year, but I, I did not get an answer, so I stopped. <laughs> well, who knows when you will get an answer? Well, you know, they always say sometimes it doesn't happen right away. Sometimes it's time. So, yeah. Uh, well, also. Remember what we said the other day too. I you, you, not you personally, but you do it as a human being. Tired of some of these athletes on TV every time they win. They, I want to thank God for letting me win this. Let's well, that's very selfish. Do you them. truly believe God singled you out to win? And God picked on the poor opponent so, and made him lose. Come on, everybody. Let's be fair to your honor. Okay? I could care less who won the Super Bowl or the World Series or happen. the God lottery. God did not single one team out to win and point his finger for the other team to lose. You know, they gotta stop. It's, it's, we have selective beliefs. You know? Well, yeah. They believe what they want to believe and when it's not what they want to believe. They, you hear them go, see, what do I tell you? It's not true. <laughs> when they hear what they want to hear, they believe it. It's like some of these motivational speakers. Those speakers right. There, there are so much that because what your BS there is going on the planet. For the most part, they're making tons or hundreds of millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. For making you well, as we discussed weeks back, if you remember, everyone is special. No, you are uh, you are not. Not everyone is special. Who is? Who knows? You've got to make yourself special. You see, and that all ties into religion, beliefs, the thought process of the human being. Right. Well, organized uh, religion. Organized yeah, religion. Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, organized religion. Causes a lot of uh, a lot of negative uh, things today. You know, I mean. Uh, uh, well, you're right. I think it makes you narrow-minded and it gives you tunnel vision as far as your beliefs go. Everybody outside of your little belief system is wrong if they don't agree with you. I think religion, sadly, has destroyed more lives than anything in the history of mankind. Uh, the wars all over the world usually are over. Well, you know, yeah, organized. Religious groups don't think the same, so they fight, which I don't understand. I personally don't look down on anybody or anything. If, hey, that's what you believe. I respect you for it. I'm going to put you down for it because you don't think like I do. Why do you want to go out and kill people in Star Wars because you think differently? Nobody it just doesn't make sense to right. me. Right. Nobody has been able to prove that their God exists, so why why start a war over it? Well, another thing I used to ask people and it, it bothered them a lot. Or spend taxpayers' money. On. I, I, somebody did something really stupid or dumb. I would say, Are you a religious person? And they usually say, Yeah. I said, Could you look me in the eye right now? Do you think your God is real proud of you right now? Boy, they get quiet real fast. I said, I truly doubt that could be honest. And I said, I want you to go home tonight and think about what you've done. And later on, you tell me. I said, look in the mirror. 
think about what you've done. You tell me what looks back at you. Boy, they get very upset at that. It makes them very nervous. I think you're getting upset. Why? Is it because you're going to feel guilty later? You know you will. Oh, they don't like that. Mm -hmm. They don't like when somebody criticizes them. But it's true. So yeah. like the police. Right. Well, we were talking yeah. about... Species. Uh, we don't like when you don't agree with us. You know, it's odd that people think this way, believe this way. It's not right. We were talk. We were talking about uh, uh, all the images of of God by uh, all the artists in history and and oh, people. Yes, you were right. You'd be always strong looking, with long, flowing grayish or white hair, with a grayish or white right. beard. Right. Dante's Inferno. Looking, looking very dignified in essence. Right? Well. What, what I'm saying is it comes out of people's imagination of what they think God right. and, and angels and demons and, and, and hell looks like. I mean, it's all their imagination. But I got a real deep question for you and Dr. Bill. Before uh, the heavens and the earth was created, uh, did God always exist in nothingness? Or did, did, How can something did, always have been there, gentlemen? Think about the thing Weird thought. How could something always I'm trying to finish what I was going to say? Wait till later. Impossible. Everything must have a beginning. Think right. About that. Did anybody? How, did, could, how could he or she or it, it was a different being that have you always? How can it always have been there? How can that be? It's impossible. Everything must have a beginning. Yeah, who, who created God if the, before the heavens and the earth? What did God do to amuse himself when there was no heavens and the earth or, or angels or man or... Well, who who well, knows? Maybe the God angels have been around. Huh? He played what, what Angry Birds on his well iPhone. He played Angry Birds on his iPhone. You know, yes. Which God? Is there a big boardroom table up there with all the different belief systems, gods, sitting around? Uh, what's the truth? I'm not trying to sound sacrilegious. Mm. I'm not an atheist. I'm just asking questions. Mm, that's I, good. I would love to know the actual truth. Would listen, you? Listen. Would it be wonderful to see signs? Right. Now, and why is it every time something goes great, thank God, when things go bad, it was God's way, God's will, or God takes all those people on a plane crashes, God he needed them. Why isn't that considered a form of mass murder? needed them for what? Uh, so that I think. Yeah. It's just funny how people or, explain away or right, excuses right. for this God. And if he is so all-powerful, does he need some little beings like us to make excuses and argue his points? So what's the point here? What's really going on? I would love to know what's truly and, and, going and, on. And uh, um, a right Right-wing fundamentalist evangelicals always say when somebody dies prematurely, they always say, "Oh, uh, the Lord has uh, decided to bring him back home or bring her back home." Well, I what does that mean? You, bring her back you are home. Right, you're right, Jim, and I think people do do that because it makes them feel better. It's yeah, I guess so. <clears throat> to make you feel better, to get through the agony, the pain that you're enduring, losing a loved one or somebody you care about. See, what, it would be so bad for asking that. Am right. I a bad guy here? No, no, you're not. I yeah, was just like the, I was just like the, no, I know you're not saying that, but I was just like the, no, the truth. Is that so bad? What, what you're really doing... Like to know. I need a bottle of whiskey. You know? What you're doing is uh, is what we call being a, an independent, free thinker with an open mind, which is exactly what we have been promoting. You this, must, you must Open-minded. Don't no. be closed-minded. Disagree. Well, get mad at people. Yeah, but you're quite. You have. You're. You're as a as as an independent free thinker. The first part's very important. You're an independent free thinker that is not afraid to question everything before you believe it. You. 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 Well, I haven't even expressed my thoughts yet today. All I've said is I've asked questions. I didn't say there were my beliefs. I just asked. Well, 
that's what I, I mean. Question, you're not afraid. people think about things. Because I don't know what everybody thinks. I do know that when you ask them these questions, people sometimes get very upset, and I don't know why you're getting upset. All I did was ask you a question. Right. If you're so strong in your, quote, faith, your belief, your hope, if you're so strong, why are you getting upset over a simple question? Right. Well, like... What they do, as you both... Really know. I'm sure you've encountered that. And, uh, mm. There's nothing wrong with conversation. Yeah. We like, also discussed the monthly show back about they say you should never talk about politics or religion. Oh. Why not? Why do we have to run away from confrontation? What is intelligent conversation and confrontation? <clears throat> what's wrong why with saying never discuss? Why what, not? What's wrong with saying no to people and saying I, I I'm sorry, but I disagree with you. What if what, what if you had a college what if you had a college professor that that gave a lesson for the day and you disagreed with that college professor and, 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 and you asked him why you asked him what why you're getting deep. Is there anything wrong with Boing. nothing wrong with debate you're right Jim. like like in other, in other words why do you believe this to be true explain yourself. It, yeah, well, the same token, Jim, in the past, too, you, like I said, you've had some professors say excellent questions, blah, 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 blah. You've had others after the class is over said, so don't ever disrupt my class like that again. But oh, I'm here to learn. I ask questions. Do you get mad at me for asking? It's that ignorance. If somebody's teaching you a theory, let's say it's not even a proven fact, and you question why do you feel that way about the subject? Can you, is there, is there anything you want to use to back it up? And a professor gets... Criticism or is that asking an honest question? It's an honest question. You're an independent free thinker. You're not saying they're right. You're not saying they're wrong. You're questioning. And that's all you're doing. And they get upset. I don't understand that kind of thinking. Yeah, they get upset. You're right. It's ego. It's about ego. Well, that's not ego. It's... it's what is it? Their little state haven of faith and hope. No, you know, it's, it, it, if you're, maybe you're, maybe listen. Inside, maybe I am wrong, they're protecting you know, their territory. You're, no. you're a student. Listen, th uh, th this is the scenario. You're a student. You pay good money for, for college tuition. Yeah, and, yeah. and you have a right in America to ask a professor, why do you feel this way? You you want you don't want to just accept something as truth. That's just right. yeah, the guy, the professor knocks on you, Brad. I, I would say, uh, why is it I'm not allowed to ask you a question, Mr. Glass? Would you tell me what I've done is wrong, sir? It's a learning process. You know, I'd love to see it, hear the response. Yeah, but it, it's a learning process. You're in you're in you're in a college. You're in a university classroom. And uh, it's, it's a learning still, process. It's still just human beings, yeah. Well, it could be. It could and be a politician. when you rock their little safe world at times. Yeah, it could be a politician running for re-election, and and they're shaking hands on the street, and uh -huh. and, and they bring up uh, somebody brings up a subject, and you ask the politician, the 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 senator, the uh, incumbent, well, why this and that? Explain to me why did you do this? Why did this it's happen? It's kind of funny too how they're all real nice, pat you on the back when everything's going smooth. Well, they could blow you uh, off. The moment you ask a question that invokes argument or whatever, <sighs> they change. You see, they yeah. all they love you when it's going smooth. Of course. The moment you little agree uh, or ask a question, <clears throat> bam. I should have brought some Hall's mental in my throat. Why is that? Yeah, what, true. What, are they, what is everyone afraid of? Well, you know what? I'm I'm proud of what Anthony Weiner did. Somebody started calling him names because of what he did in his personal life, and he. Yeah, that delicatessen that day, the guy said you're married to a Middle Easterner. No, he he called him uh, a Jewish guy with a yarmulke. Called Weiner, uh, said he was like a sh uh, he was a disgrace, and he's he's. Well, he's not a he's, disgrace. He did some stupid little things. No well. Big. Well, Anthony, Anthony Weiner, Anthony Weiner felt concentrate on my record, concentrate on my track record, what it, what, yeah. my job performance. Exactly. Don't exactly. make the the personal thing an issue in his ability exactly. to be mayor of New York City. I mean, the guy did a great right. job as as a congressman for New York State. That's I thought right. he did. But people look for the weakest link. 
Yeah. And they'll pick on you for that. Well. The slightest little thing. Because. That's sadly, the nature of the human it's like it's like the it's like the Miss America pageant. Everybody, everybody has to be pure as the driven snow, and you know uh, politicians have to be pure. Come off of it, people. He's American as any of us. We all have foreign, uh, what's the word? I don't want to. They got this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, America. She's Indian. She's beautiful. She's a sweet lady. Come. Well. Well, like they said about her, yeah. just well, it's wrong. racism, you know. Uh, well, well, what I'm getting at is America has this unrealistic, puritanical view of everything that people that are in the spotlight have to be pure as the driven snow. There, there could be no scandal. There could be no this and that. Look, look what well, they... Would you describe to me what your phrase is, Jimmy? What does pure as the driven snow mean? Because I don't know anyone who is. Look at Charlie oh, Sheen. People that, people look, that act like this and we're taking trouble. Really, what, please. What, what, what would you like to see? Look at what happened uh, to Charlie. We, we want to see so-and-so win. Well, she's Italian. Speaking she's Italian, I was going to say some choice people. words, but I don't know. So this girl won. She's Indian. So, what so what? Mean? She's from India. She's a, she's yeah. a woman of color. So what? Yeah, that awful? They're yeah. just, well, Vanessa Williams, my God. A lot of them are beautiful. Beautiful, Vanessa Williams. Almost 30, almost 30 years ago, uh, about from from Miss America. They were taking away because yeah, I was going to say, I was going to talk about, I was going to give an example of Charlie. Uh, Bill, por favor, por. Charlie Sheen. All he did was give his honest opinion about the producers of that show, uh, Two and a Half Men, and he was upset about something, and because he gave his opinion, they they canned him from the show. Well, it was more than just that history. Well, well, maybe that's the real reason. And then he kind of went, went off the deep end of night and like a whack hole, oh, a nut job for about a while. I hope, but it's, you know. That's his know. private. It's his private life. America's got this nitpicky, puritanical view of everything. It's just. Well, I think a lot of what it is is why you have professional sports uh, morals clauses in your contract. You uh, you you play for a pro team or whatever you are, and it's it's good. You are role models. You're expected to be a twenty. You are a twenty-four hour employee. You know, hey. Oh, well, that's I that's a little game. unfair. I got drunk last night. Kill somebody. Like you represent the team. Twenty-four hours. Day. Yeah, but isn't that what IBM did? They they well, they. Well, it kind of worked. It did it kind of work, but it, because what we're in the world, you couldn't. You only back in the day. It's uh, not fair. White shirts and no facial hair, and uh, it worked. Yeah, but when you punch when you punch out, what you do at home is your own business. Well, no, it's not. You, you no. Know, tomorrow's clause. You can't go out and rape somebody in this. Well, like, yeah. Well, yeah, I understand. You know, you can't. Uh, well, they didn't have that on the web back then, and because they needed yeah. a certain amount of human respect, you represent the corporation you work for twenty-four hours yeah, a well, day. Hollywood's different. <clears throat> maintain your dignity. Is it that hard? You know. Yeah. Well. And I'm not asking possible. You're saying, don't do stupid things. I know. You're well, a part of this organization. You're going, you're right. disgracing us. Yeah, but I mean, if, I could, if it was my organization, SuperTech, I'd be the same way. Well, if, Char if Charlie yeah. Sheen yeah. want, want, if Charlie Sheen wants to live with a couple of porn stars and do a little cocaine, I, I, I you know, behind it is, uh, in, in, in the privacy of his home, I mean, I think well, that that's... that was fine. Jimmy, nobody complained about that. Right. That wasn't what the whole situation was about at all. It had nothing to do with the two porn girls or the cocaine. Oh, the main, the main the drug, thing is... Uh, it had nothing to do with that. He started with the other uh, uh, job, walking yeah. off the... Wouldn't come to the job, and he was coming in drunk. <laughs> couldn't do the job. And then he held down, he was said, I'm not coming back, I want more money. Right. And they just said, we're going to wait for you. Right. Well, the whole... They, they, they tolerated a lot of his BS, let's be honest mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. Well, the whole back, the whole backbone of what we're talking about is that don't accept information from people as the true gospel. Don't be afraid to question it and 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 reason it out and uh, yeah, wait. And, no, I'm sorry to interrupt. Don't get upset when people do question. They're asking a question. Yeah. Well, uh, an honest question. It's, deserves it's, an honest it's a answer. little beyond that. It's as simple. It doesn't deserve anger. It deserves an answer. Well, people... Don't get pe upset. 
people should. At least at the start of your show, I asked you, do you pray? If so, what about? If you don't, why don't you? Don't get mad at me for asking. No, you no, of course you. not. You know, I'm asking you a question. I didn't say it's well, my belief. Many. I don't. You don't know what my my belief. I've never said, mentioned it. Ma many. Oh, I no, many Americans automatically believe what they hear based on tradition and it's unproven nonsense. They, they're afraid to ask why. why. Why do you have a painting of God looking the same way? They don't ask... You're questioning, not me. I'm glad I have my buddy over here, Mr. Anonymous. That's what it comes down to. Hey, Bones. You are questioning their faith. They don't like that. Says your faith isn't that strong. But, that uh, but an independent free thinker would say to the Catholic Church, why did why does every painting of God look like a a, a man, a white man, uh, uh, in, in, a, in a white robe with a long white beard and long white hair? Wait. I don't know what you're talking about. And they'll give you a dirty you look, probably. That. How dare you question? How dare you question it? You see, you're already questioning. Or Dante. Why are you getting upset? All I did was ask you a question. What are you upset about? Or questioning. Why Why did the Catholic Church, Church accept Dante's Inferno as, as a description of hell? Why did they Why did they accept it? And that was probably his own description of his very own personal hell. Yeah, well, was Dante ever actually in hell and come back from, you know, from death? I mean, uh, there's no well, proof. Who knows? Maybe he was. Again, we'd like proof. We don't know. Possibly he was. There's nothing wrong with questioning. No, nothing. Never. When you stop questioning, you stop learning, and you stop living. There you go. It's that simple. Gentlemen, there you go. We've gone longer than usual, which is good, though. Yes. Tell us have a good rest of your show. All right. Thank you for joining James, us. Thank you, Dr. Bill. Thank you. All right. Hold on. All of you have a good one. Yes. Bye bye. I'll talk to you later, gentlemen. All right. Bye bye. All right, fellas. Bye bye. And unplug your ears too. Uh, well, that was the whole point. It was it was in part of being independent, free thinker is to question, not just take everything face value and believe it, because it's well. When you question, you got to have a, you as a free thinker should have somewhere to go to answer your question. Yeah. And in the questions that were being posited here, and they were religious, and they were of a Christian nature, there is some place to go, and that's the Bible. Those questions are answered in the Bible. Like what existed before the heavens and the earth were created? What did God do? What did God, have? the Father, and the Word existed for all eternity. Mm -hmm. Remember. Until the creation of the universe, mm -hmm. you really have no concepts of time, place. These are material things. You mean the and ma nothing yeah. existed mm -hmm. okay. as far as material was concerned before the universe. You mean the measurement of time and, and calendars and, and even even in the Bible, God says the day is like a thousand years to God. Yeah, time is okay. There's no, There's no concept, concept of time. Of time. For time. There's just eternity for God. In eternity. Eternity you know. is simply eternity. Right. But the universe gives us time. Yeah. Material. You know. Well, we have, uh, you know, now we have. Nothing uh, existed. Now we have the new theory, the no more Big Bang theory. We have the black hole theory of the creation of the universe. It's a new, a new theory that's up, up there. That's good. You know, I mean, it, the fact of the matter is, the universe never existed at one time. Mm -hmm. It was brought into being. Right. However, you want to look at it. As and part if you want of to look at it yeah. biblically, yeah. then God created it as part of a divine plan. Okay. And people have to understand that the, the, lo the word, the logos, the Melchizedek. Uh, Melchizedek, uh, Yahweh. Uh, uh, Yahweh, I am Yahweh. Yeah, th this names. this is the spirit that not only visited Earth during the Old Testament, but it, it is the spirit that became Jesus. And 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 you say it's the spirit that created 
the planets and the earth. The, the God who became Jesus created all things. All things were created by him yeah. with the Father. Okay? This is the problem here. You got answers to certain problems. You're talking about God and stuff like that, but how many people understand that in the Bible there are two gods? Not one. Yeah. There's a family. But it's incredible how two people... two personages, spirit personages in the family. Right. And God wishes that family to become bigger. Yeah. But it's just amazing how there are individuals just because they were they were born and raised a Catholic, they immediately they don't question anything. They immediately believe the traditions that they grew up with without questioning it. Remember, they the, don't Catholic, have the Catholic Church persecuted the original Church of God. The, what became the Catholic Church came out of the Babylon Mysteries religion propagated by Simon Magus. The, the traditions of the Catholic Church are pagan. He called himself a Christian, so, but he was not. So the, the Catholic Church and its traditions are actually a pagan, pagan cult? Correct. Because how, how much of the Catholic Church go by the original Bible? They don't go by it at all. They got heaven and hell. Those concepts are not in the Bible. Has no one ever read Revelations 21 and 22? To see what goes on after the millennium? Mm -hmm. And to, 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 to uh, read uh, other portions that say, David's not in heaven. He's taking a third sleep like everybody else. Mm -hmm. There's no such thing. No one has ascended into heaven except he who came down from heaven. Mm -hmm. Plainly stated in the Bible. Yet you got these traditional concepts that grow up. Heaven and hell. No such things. Yeah. And why does God the Father look like that with the white hair and everything? Because they made it up. It comes from Because some people want to hold something. They made golden calves. They made snakes. They made anything they're gods to hold on to something. They want a tangible uh, Physical image. Physical material thingy. Like the uh, the Russian Orthodox Church has all those icons, you know, they call them icons. You know, they're uh, like uh, Renaissance paintings of what Michael, St. Michael, Gabriel looks like, and uh, Archangels, and what uh, Mary looked like, and Jesus looked like, and you know. And, and they got bones of saints, and skulls, yeah. and whatever. And people light candles to them. They, they pray uh, they feel that they are, their prayers are interceded. They're like they're like a middleman, like Mary yeah. Inter yeah, takes yeah, your prayers. Yeah. Well, and she but turns. They're dead. Them. Yeah, they are dead. And that's why Billy's question about do you pray and who do you pray to and everything and like if, that. And if you don't, why? It's actually insignificant and doesn't mean anything because prayer. I'm going to say prayer in its energetic form yeah. is is something good because it, oh, yeah. they have done experiments where many people gathered together and they prayed for a certain person and this, that, well, they say and they help them they say meditation also has benefit, uh, yeah. beneficial but effects but whether it's a, a stove pipe to God, that's another question isn't it? Well. Uh, prayer is like a form of confession. Like if you're in group therapy and you uh, you open up to a, a psychologist and you get it all something off your chest, <gasps> you know it's yeah, like, energy relief. It's an energy release, like uh, crying, like orgasm. Uh, uh, I would say meditation is uh, bringing about serenity of the mind, is a way of releasing possibly uh, stress. You know, you got steam building up like a pressure cooker, and, and it helps release it. Yeah. Uh, pent up sexual tension, of course, the action of intercourse or masturbation will be a release of that energy. Uh, 
things like that. Of course, you know, Billy, you know, when I put him on loudspeaker, he has a great deal of trouble hearing us. It, it's not, I hear him perfectly. I, I mean, I can't believe that he cannot hear us at all, you know, at all to make out what we're saying. But anyway, he also has a habit of doing what he does. Uh, you know, he's, uh, I've known him for 40 years, but it's got to be, an interview has to be more two ways, two way uh, operation, you know. And, uh, but I did manage to get off what I was going to say. I was making a point about people who never question what they're told and about tradition without proof and about what it's like what it is to be an independent free thinker with an open mind you know uh, you know Charlie Sheen had a view and he was PO'd he was pissed at I guess the producer or whatever and he said what he had to say and they canned him you know it's like you know, what, what does that mean? You know, you, you, you disagree with your CEO uh, and just ba based on your First Amendment right, you get fired. Yep. Which means that the corporation is not a democracy. Whoever said it was, it's a hierarchy. Top down. Yeah, it's, it's like a little mini uh, totalitarian uh, That's correct. government. That's correct. And, and your college professor might also run his class that way too, That's right? That's correct. He has his turf to protect. So he shoots his mouth off, but if you, right. if you interrupt, if you stop him and you question what he's telling the class, he might get upset. And the creationists love that. They, they, they like to uh, this timey uh, evolutionary uh, teachers in the classroom with their creationist the nonsense. Yeah, I, I read about that. Okay, I they love that. Text, especially in the red states. Yeah. They like to do that. Well, Texas, you know, is the biggest uh, textbook buyer, so all these lies get into textbooks. Okay? Propaganda. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, that that's it for that, you know. Uh, I guess let us get back into the readings of the week. And... Uh, <clears throat> this was a story that was out a little while ago about the mama who wished to name her child Messiah, <laughs> if we remember that. Yeah, I remember the other one that named his kid Adolf Hitler or something. Yeah. A woman will be allowed to name her eight-month-old son Messiah. A judge ruled on Wednesday overturning an order from another judge who said the boy's name should be changed to Martin because Messiah is a title that is held only by Jesus Christ. Well, unless you're part of Judaism, then you would disagree, but if Messiah is not, it's inappropriate, I think, to call a child uh, Jesus, which is Jesus, or Messiah. Jalisa Martin said that she couldn't believe it when child support magistrate Lou Ann Balu last month ordered Martin's eight-month-old son's name changed during a paternity hearing. The parents were disputing the baby's surname with Martin hopping to keep the name hoping, excuse me, to keep the name she had given to him, Messiah Dash Deshaun Martin, and Father Jawan McCulloch, wanting the baby to bear his last name. Balu surprised both parents by ordering that the baby's name change to Martin Deshaun McCulloch, saying that labeling this child Messiah places an undue burden on him that as a human being he cannot fulfill. <laughs> oh boy. Chancellery Court uh, Chancellor Telford E. Fogarty overturned Balu's decision on Wednesday finding that she acted unconstitutionally. Balu, Balu's bullshit. 
In addition, he found no legal basis for changing a child's name, first name, when both parents agree on it. The Wisconsin-based Freedom from Religion Foundation filed a complaint against Balu with the state's <laughs> Board of Judicial Conduct. Now many people will probably not remember this, but a few years ago, yeah, Mr. Huh. Tom DeLay, big Republican, cheetah, and crook. The man that does not ever delay his vacation time. Was charged. Republican, yeah. Was charged with, uh, where the hell was it? Uh, money laundering. Oh, really? And conspiracy convictions. Did the charges stick? We're going to get into that. A Texas appellate court <laughs> split two to one along party lines on Thursday and reversed the money laundering and conspiracy convictions that ended the political career of former U.S. House Majority Leader Tom DeLay seven years ago. How come this did not surprise me? The Texas Republican was facing a three-year prison term. So the Repub saved his ass. The two Republican judges Saved his ass. Voted along party lines. If he, if he, if Tom Delay was a Democrat, they would have fried him. Correct. And not only that, the man was guilty. And we'll see that at the end here. No, what, what, wasn't G. W. Bush and Dick Cheney guilty of what they did, and so on and so on? Yeah. And uh, they caught. Uh, was it illegal contributions to uh, old ugly turtle face uh, Mitch McConnell? Well, that's what Mr. Tom Delay was all about. Illegal uh, contributions and then laundering the money. Uh, and a conspiracy to keep the Republicans in power. Of course the, the, the corrupt politicians of the Republican Party are, going, are not going to help the poor and not have any compassion. You expect criminals to have compassion and empathy and to help no, the poor? No, I expect criminals to go to jail. That's right. And that includes uh, Goldman Sachs and the bankers, banksters. Yeah, where well, they never saw the inside of a jail, except if you protest against them. The appeals court found there was legally insufficient evidence at DeLay's 2010 trial. Well, there was enough evidence to find him guilty then, wasn't there? Sure. Well, what did it do, get lost in transit? Oops, we can't find it. Hey, insufficient evidence, what can I tell you? The briefcase got lost. Sure it did. Prosecutors had argued that DeLay's motive was to elect a Republican majority in the Texas legislature to redraw congressional districts and tighten his grip as a leader in Congress. But he got away with it, didn't he? Huh? A homeless Boston man who turned in a backpack containing tens of thousands of dollars in cash and traveler's checks says even if he were desperate he wouldn't have kept even a penny. Well I got news for you pal. 
If anybody on Wall Street would have found this backpack, you wouldn't have seen none of that money. And every penny they would have kept. Let me tell you something. You know, they always, they always malign the cop that, you know, when he finds uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars or millions of dollars in, in, in cash and drug money, that if he, if he takes it and doesn't report it, you know, right away, oh, crooked cop, crooked cop. Let me tell you something. When something is lying there in cash form and there's no paper trail, and there's no, you know, record, and it's just someone's word against another person's word. It's very tempting. Because it's gonna go in somebody's pocket. So, you know, some fat cat on top is gonna confiscate that, that money. So. Glenn James was honored on Monday at police headquarters, where Commissioner Edward Davis thanked him for his honesty and gave him a special citation. I wonder if he can eat that. The citation. You no, know, you can't eat citations. Can't eat it? No. That's like a citation is like a, a, a huge glorified slap on the back. Pat on the back. James said in a handwritten Ouch. statement given out at a news conference mm -hmm. that he was glad to make sure the bag and its con contents were returned to the owner. Even if I were desperate for money, I would not have kept even a penny, he said. James found the backpack at the South Bay Mall in the city's Dorchester neighborhood Saturday evening. He flagged down patrolling officers and handed it over. The backpack, backpack contained $2,400 in U.S. currency. Almost $40,000 in traveler's checks, Chinese passports, and other personal papers. Interesting. Very interesting, but again, nobody on Wall Street would have gave it back. Nope. Okay. And they would have actually no need for it because they already have Moolah. Listen, when it comes to, like I said before, when it comes to cash just conveniently lying around, you know, there's no way to track it or trace it to its rightful owner because everybody will say, ooh, it's mine. Everybody will say that. And you know, if you don't take it and keep your mouth shut about it, some fat cat is going to take it some fat cat that don't need the money is going to take it and you know hide it under the mattress. Somebody up up front, up high up, is going to take it. So, life is good. Oh, it is for America's super wealthy. Oh, yeah, of course. I, it's a good article. Forbes magazine on Monday released its annual list of the top 400 richest Americans. Part of the one percent, I assume. While most of the top names and rankings didn't change from a year ago, the majority of the elite club's members saw their fortunes grow over the past year, helped by strong stock and real estate markets. Basically, the mega rich are mega richer. Yeah, and the, and the mega poor are, are even uh, more destitute than ever before. It was noted that the list's minimum net income increased to a pre-financial crisis level of $1.3 billion. Well, sure, they don't pay any taxes. Thank you, conservatives in Washington up from 1.1 billion dollars in 2012 with 61 American billionaires not making the cut so that means that we have like 461 million billionaires in America I forget Ooh. what number I put in the new article it's a lot of, that's a lot of that's a lot of uh, nice tax money to run the government isn't it 
mm-hmm. to run the country. And not for the military either, for, for, for what counts. In some ways, it's harder to get on the list than it ever has been. Microsoft Corporation co-founder Bill Gates Oh, I hate that. Remains guy. America's richest man. That douchebag face. That's taking the top spot on the list for the 20th straight year. The, wor- the world's richest and most wicked dork. With a douchebag face and a, and a Mo Howard, stupid Mo Howard hair- hairstyle. The bangs. I hate that guy. With a net worth of $72 billion. He was good at taking credit and stealing other people's ideas. Isn't that how you get ahead in America? Isn't that how you do it? Yeah. On somebody else's back? Well, he didn't. He didn't say. He didn't tell that story to the college students about how to be a success. He left that part out. But he was accurate about the fact that, you know, when you go out in the world, you're all just a social security number. Up from sixty-six billion dollars a year. Investor Warren Buffett, head of Berkshire Hathaway Inc., posted another distant second-place finish mm-hmm. with fifty-eight point five billion dollars. Amen. But increased his <coughs> net worth from forty-six billion. Oracle. Corporation co-founder Larry Ellison stayed third with forty-one billion dollars. Well, a lot of juicy good tax dollars right there with these guys. And was the only member of the top ten whose net worth was unchanged from a year ago. Taxes that they don't pay. Evil brothers Charles and David Coke. Oh boy. Co-owners of Coke Industries Incorporated. Tweedle Tweedle D Tweedle Demon and Tweedle Dumman. Dumman. No, they're they're both demons. They stay tied for fourth with thirty-six billion dollars each. Up from thirty-one billion in twenty twelve. Tax vacation for the past 30 years. Every one of them are on a tax vacation. Walmart heirs Christy Walton, Masters, right? Jim Walton, yeah. Alice Walton. Not the Waltons from the old TV show. You know, night, Grandpa. Good night, John Boy. Good night, Mary Allen. No, no, these, these are. S. Robson Walton. Yeah took the next four spots with holdings ranging from 33.3 billion dollars to 35.4 billion dollars. And and they they still continue to pay their employees crap. Crap. Absolute crap. With minimal or no benefits. Oh, they get benefits already. Yeah, what? From the state. Oh, because they have to apply for That's correct. for, For Food stamps, Medicare, Medicaid, and welfare, whatever, because they can't survive on on the Walmart uh, salary. New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg, Republican and billionaire, founder of the eponymous financial information company. Yeah, I wish Bill De Blasio defeats him this November. He's not running. He has not can't run. He's got his third term. Oh, you mean this is this is Bloomberg's third term? Yeah. Oh, Republican that will be go. Oh, uh, Lota. Lota. The, the, Lota. One, the uh, Halota. Halota. The one that uh, Rudy Giuliani's campaigning for. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry, so sorry. Anyway, Mr. Bloomberg rounds out the top ten with thirty-one billion dollars. Up from twenty-five billion last year. Why on earth are the middle class paying the tax burden? Is incredibly beyond me. It's like so 
absurd and unfair and ridiculous. You just heard the income of these people. It's obscene. It's obscene. 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 It's worse than when we talk about uh, baseball players, what they get. It's it's more obscene. It's it's they're not earning. Look, don't believe Fox News. These people that he just mentioned, their money has has been making money for them a long, long time ago. This is not hard-earned money. This is not money that they worked hard for to earn. They just can afford to hire the best to run their corporations. And of course, they don't pay taxes, thanks to Republicans. This money is making money for them. You know, and all the- And the more money you have, the easier it is to make more. Yeah, you just sit on your ass and it makes more. You, told, you said it best uh, uh, many times. The cost, the overhead of, of labor for a company is tax deductible. Wages. Wages are tax deductible. Benefits. So when they cry, like, you know, Billy was saying, uh, his father used to, of IBM used to complain about unions, unions of this, unions of that. It's all bullshit. It's all, the, it's, the labor is deductible. It's crap so that you don't go against them. Please pity the billionaire. And yeah. that's what we've done in this right. country. The propaganda has been so good that the poor fight amongst themselves and pity the poor billionaires. He, I don't know how he, if he feels the same way as this, this guy, uh, this supervisor um, I used to have a, a UPS in uh, Secaucus, New Jersey years ago. He, uh, I mean, he never he never gave me a hard time because you know I'm James P. Madonna. You know I freaking I'll tell your ass off. But he, you know what he used to say that people that go to the restroom, uh, they should get that time deducted from their break. That's part of their break. H having your bladder ready to burst. Well, they do that. They do that. <laughs> they are sick people. When are we going to get this in, in our heads? The Republicans are evil. The CEO types that you're talking about are are also evil. They are sick. This obsession with every penny, with profit before the planet, profit before people. This is an obsession. Actually, it's more profit because they already make a profit. What? What? The, the, the companies in 1940, 1950, 1960, and half of 1970 weren't making profits? Of course they were making profits. And they well, when they speak about profit today, yeah. they're talking about more. And they profit. blame it on the stockholders. Okay. Now, now, uh, uh, are you finished with that particular reading? Because I'm going to tell you a true story, real, real quick. Uh, last week, I, I did a little expose on the WWE, World Wrestling Federation, World Wrestling Entertainment. Mm -hmm. uh, a, per, a friend of mine who was a WWE superstar back in the 2000s, early 2000s. He was telling me, he says, you know, Vince McMahon was complaining and he was saying, you know, in the back, uh, these, uh, the, 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 these wrestlers that, that work for me, um, all of them, they can afford to pay for their own health insurance. I shouldn't have to provide them with health insurance. We're talking about the lower end, lower to medium uh, caliber wrestlers, not not the uh, the headliners with the big contracts. Now he says the average, based on the 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 the, uh, the income of the average wrestler for the WWE, it proves they can afford to pay for their own health insurance. First of all, you can't do an average if the top wrestlers are pulling in, like Tom Cena, are pulling in five million dollars mm -hmm. or more. How could you do? Uh, an average calculation if the lower end wrestlers are paying for their own transportation including rent a car and plane flights they're paying for their own hotel or motel accommodations they have to fly coach with connective flights they have to carpool it with many other wrestlers and they have to st stick several wrestlers in one motel room and they don't have much to show for it at the end we're talking about not the big kahunas. So, when you do an average and you take the top people making millions a year and you take the rest of them making crap, 
that the average calculation is not a fair calculation. Right. You take a, just to make it simple. Should be a median. The uh, people on top are number five. Right. People on the bottom are number one. The average of that is three. People on the bottom never even saw a three. No. You know, it, it, it's it, the same with the flat tax. It, it's, it's the same crap. Yeah. You can't average out if you have such a a wide range of difference between the mainstream employees and the handful that are getting a fortune, and then you do an average. It's just it, it, it's it's ridiculous, you know. So uh, I just wanted to add that. You know, and, and you know, Vince McMahon, he's a CEO, he's a, a billionaire now. You know, I don't, I don't expect him to be any different than any other American CEO. So you know, it's tied into what we talk about. Anyway, what are we doing here on time? Uh, one more. The records publisher, North Jersey Media Group Incorporated, is suing Sarah Palin. Really? and her political action committee for copyright infringement over the use of an iconic 911 photograph. A lawsuit filed on Friday in federal court in Manhattan says Palin's Sarah Pack posted a copy of the photo on its website and Facebook page without permission. The photo depicts three New York City firefighters hoisting an American flag amid the rubble at the World Trade Center hours after the attacks. Oh, it sounds like one of those Time Magazine classic, like you said, iconic photos. And photos like that are copyrighted? That photo was. It was by the, the record. Oh. The record owned that photograph. Oh, okay. Jennifer A. Borg, <laughs> Vice President, Corporate Secretary, and General Counsel for North Jersey Media Group said the lawsuit was filed Friday when neither Palin nor the PAC responded to a letter. I don't expect them to. Right. It is important to enforce our copyright on this iconic photo. Oh, yeah. yeah. When neither Ms. Palin nor representatives from her PAC responded to our demand letter to remove the photograph, we were left with no choice but to seek redress in court. Mm -hmm. The lawsuit asks the court to stop Sarah Pack from using the picture, and it also seeks damages. Arlington, Virginia-based Sarah Pack did not respond to a message for comment. Maybe because they can't write English. Uh, yeah. The image to have been removed from its position on both the Facebook, Facebook page and the PAC website as of early Saturday afternoon. The New Jersey Media Group publishes the record and the Herald News newspapers plus 40 weekly community papers. 12 magazines and two websites. So cut Miss Perlin a break. They can't speak English. No comprende. Well, this, uh, what is it called? The North Jersey Media Group? Yeah. They should, uh, instead of worrying about copyright infringement of a photo, they should start practicing putting the real deep hard hitting truth in their newspapers it's, oh, and geez. real and the stuff i find out on the internet you want to see should be in the newspaper advertisers go bye bye 
Why you mean there are there are sponsors to the newspaper that might take offense to uh, the truth, the real truth, absolutely about the corporate pluto Why not? plutocracy. Why not? Because because the president <laughs> does Monsanto want people to know the truth that they're poisoning us? Yeah, and they want to control the world's food yeah. supply. Yeah. I guess not. Obviously not. Well, that's why they're fighting. Uh, Does Walmart want the people to know the truth? That I they don't pay their people a living wage? I guess that's why Monsanto is spending money uh, on the lobbying to stop uh, the labeling laws from being passed. <coughs> GMO. Yeah, what's laws. that Monsanto bill that's been uh, allowing them to do what the hell they want? The Monsanto Protection Act? Yeah. Yeah. Why does Monsanto need protection? Protection, protection from us. <laughs> it's it's just a, it's just a, as wicked as they are, as evil as they are. It's a massively wealthy corporation. Why does it need protection from poor little old working stiff or not or unemployed stiff Americans? Why does it need protection? Ah. It does. <laughs> so that's it. All right. That's it. Thank you for joining us for this week's Progressive Discussions. Yes, the weeks fly by, and so does this show. Uh, it's amazing, Dr. Bill, how the time does fly when we're doing this show. Uh, people just don't understand. When they tell me that our shows are long, I, they don't understand that when you're talking about important topics, and they all flow into one another. The time does go by, you just don't realize it. You know, yes, but the American and uh, uh, focus of interest is short. Well, the so uh, the attention span... are not going to stay with long stuff. The attention span... They even complain about three-hour movies. Titanic. Yeah, that is a long movie. See? Well, you know what it is? If they see it in a movie theater, they, they and if they go to the, the, the restroom, which they will, or if they go for snacks, which they will, if you want to get ripped off, they will miss some of the movie. Now, there, there used to be intermission. There used to be two movies. Plus a cartoon or two. Yeah, at the beginning, you would see a cartoon or Three Stooges or something. Anyway, I, I don't want to uh, regress and uh, get off the subject, but <laughs> thank you for joining us for this week's Progressive Discussions. This is, I guess you can call it the Vernal Equinox Progressive Discussion Show because the Vernal Equinox, I, I think, takes place the first day of autumn. The Vernal is the spring. No, there is a, there is a Vernal in autumn too, sir. It's the autumnal. Autumnal Equinox. All right, whatever. It's an equinox. Whatever. It's a change of season. It's an equinox, and the, tomorrow at I think 4:40 or 4:44. I, I I know there's two fours in it. 4:40 p.m. Let's say fall comes in. Tomorrow, fall has arrived. So I think from from what the weatherman says, this is the last warm day, possibly, of the year. But you never know. Oh, by the way, uh. The poor people of Hong Kong, China, and Taiwan are bracing themselves for a very powerful typhoon. A hundred, uh, almost Japan 200 miles, over 180 mile an hour winds, huh? Japan just had one. Maybe it's the same one. No, this is a new one that, that that's coming. That's coming from. That's going to hit Hong Kong and Taiwan. This is supposed to be a bad one. So, do you see climate change? What it's what's happening? Even though somebody posted an article saying that, I don't know how true it is, saying that scientists are claiming the ice sheet is getting bigger. I saw that. Rapidly. I saw that. Sometimes I wonder. If it that's, might be just a temporary thing. It could be a temporary thing. Yeah. Yeah. Global warming is definitely here and the storms are getting worse. So, uh, uh, although we have had a very quiet hurricane season. So far. So far. So far. So the idea that these people have that they want to remain on the coast and they want to live near the shore and they want to have their businesses near the ocean 
like the, uh, the, the numbskulls in New Jersey, they have another uh, thing coming. I mean, the, the storms are going to get worse and worse and worse. Where are we going to go? Oh, by the way, speaking of New Jerseyans, I'm a New Jerseyan, but a lot of them are stupid assholes. You know, some people, when interviewed, actually gave Chris Christie a, a high score. <laughs> what idiots, what numbskulls. It's incredible what dummies what are they we, scoring them on? we have in America, huh? What are they scoring them on? Everything. Well, you can't score them on uh, 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 women's health. He uh, gets a, an F there. Uh, property taxes. Uh, property uh, taxes. Education. F there. Education, education. F. Idiots are giving them an A. Teachers. F. Unless the media's lying about people giving them. Well, maybe they're giving them an A because he gave rich people a tax break. Yeah. I must say he has been good there. The only thing Chris Christie would get an A on is a maybe a hot dog or pizza eating contest. I would give him an A on that, but other than that, or waffle eating, or you know, funnel cake eating contests at, at the, at the uh, on the boardwalk, but he doesn't deserve an A on anything else. What about frozen custard? Frozen custard? Yeah. Oh, he probably like Homer Simpson. He'll probably put his mouth underneath and just suck it all out of the machine. <laughs> Say so long to these uh, people. So long, people. Yeah.